Welcome to the Develop Basketball Podcast. This is Coach Chevy. Today we have Tanya Warren, head coach of University of Northern Iowa Women's Basketball. Enjoy. What's up, Chevy? Oh, yeah. Hi. I've got to let it breathe, Chevy. Let it I breathe. like it. <laughs> this is mine, too. <laughs> How are you? It's long, but it's thin. Good. <laughs> yeah, you look. How are you? I'm doing all right. You, you look, look great. Good. Say that again. You look great. Well, thank you. You do too. I thought I'd wear a hat in honor of you because you always wear a hat. It, but as soon as I get one, I'm wearing it. <laughs> I can't wait. What do you mean? Where'd you do it your hat? <laughs> I got all this. I got all this bull stuff. I gotta wait till they're better before I start repping them again. You can always rep your J stuff, Chef. Always, will always, always, always and forever. Who you got Absolutely. on? Absolutely. Whose hat is that? Oh, USA basketball, big time. Well, it's the only <laughs> baseball hat I have right now. I need to go buy a U and I one myself. <laughs> How are you? I'm good though. I'm really good. Um, last week was crazy. Was it last week? I'm like losing. I don't even know what today is. I know. I I feel like I'm losing track of. You got this up and moving pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. So the funny thing is I told Flan about this about two and a half years ago, maybe. Uh Uh-huh. Um, it was like two or three summers ago because me and Megan were talking about doing like some free camps and stuff like that because. Right. There's not a lot of stuff like that going on. Um, so we had, we had had this big idea to do these camps. Sam Shewitt was involved too. Um, and then basically by the end of it with NCAA compliance, there was a bunch of stuff that I couldn't do. Yep. So we weren't even able to do anything, but we had already had all this progress. And then on top of that, like I, I, I enjoy writing and you know doing some things. So I stuck with it because I felt like once Flynn was done, in my mind <laughs> back then, I was like, when he's done, I'm going to be done anyway. So I'll just mm-hmm. I'll do this. Um, but then I had Kayali and I was, I, I was talking to you about it a little bit. Yeah. West, um, where I was just like, this is probably going to be it. I mm-hmm. felt like it felt like that. I wasn't hundred percent sure, mm-hmm. but it felt like that. Mm-hmm. And so then COVID hit and I'm at home every day and it was like, yep, it's it. This is it. So yep. I just felt like it was God. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's a way of doing that. Yeah, seriously. I, I, cause I really did think I was going to stay for there. There were p- parts of me that I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with it for a few more years. And then, yeah. yeah. So yeah. But the whole purpose behind this Tanya is, I, I think we've talked about it before, you know, there's not a lot of Dixon Jensen's in the world right? <laughs> and not a lot of people who have access to him, you know, mm-hmm. or people like him. It's not like it's, he's the only one, but Mm-hmm. I just feel like, especially, you know, right in our backyard in North Omaha, there's like a lot of coaches and a lot of kids who want to really, really play college. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to like give good information to people who don't have mm-hmm. great ad- access, I guess, you mm-hmm. know, to a person and even coaches like there's a lot. So this one will be specifically for coaches. So we, we did some like round tables with, some North Omaha schools and they were really, they were hungry for information. Okay. Um, so my thought is if, if we can maybe help a few coaches even, I feel like that would help the kids. Um, so you can be as windy as you want with these answers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go off the top. All right, cool. I like it. Okay. Okay. So we're going to start with your first experience with basketball. Okay. Who was your biggest influence when you were playing when you were young? My, my family, my dad and my brothers. I was introduced to the game when I was five. Um, and I grew up with two, old, two older brothers and two older cousins. And the only way to um, play is I had to tag along with them. And that's, that's what I did. So at a very early age. Okay. So when you started to realize that you were super serious about basketball, what was your day to day like? Were you were you just out playing with your brothers and your dad or what? Yeah, I was I was seven. And at at seven, I knew that I wanted to play collegiate basketball and uh, everywhere my brothers went. I went. Um, My dad and I 
my dad often teases now and says he used to trick me because back in those days, I really liked Mr. Dairy Queen, Mr. Misty's. <laughs> and every time we would go shoot, I would always get a Mr. Missy after we shot. So uh, he always teases. That was his way of getting me hungry for it. And then uh, after that, it just kind of took care of itself. But we would go shoot every Sunday. And we had a time every Sunday. We had at Sadell High School, we had a park that we went to. Um, and it just something that became a habit. And throughout the course of the week, we played a lot of pickup, um, a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of family games. Uh, but there was never a time that we was not playing something. And more often than not, it was basketball. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good because I think kids are gonna be challenged right now, you know, with, with uh, you know, stipulations to be doing something different than what they're used to, which is practice three hours a day with their team. And it's, it's not a lot of pickup going on. Um, well, and, and too, Chev, you know, so many people think that you have to have a hoop and um, a bat to get better. Not, not with the basic fundamentals. I mean, ball handling, passing, there's so many things that you can work on that you don't necessarily need a hoop. I can work on my shooting form without a hoop. I can work on my shooting form without a ball. Um, but it's just going back to the basics. And sometimes we get really bored with doing the little things, but it's those little things that allow us to do big things. And I think sometimes that gets lost. Um, but there's so many things that you can do, um, even in quarantine, to be yeah. quite honest. Yeah, no, I agree. That's good. Okay, so what's your why? Why do you coach? Oh, gosh. <laughs> let me, let me, I'll, I'll be really honest, and, and I'm probably going to share a little bit more than I should. But my story is, um, I talked about I grew up with two older brothers, and my oldest brother was... 17 my middle brother was 16 i was 14 and my brother senior in high school was being pretty highly recruited and died suddenly of a heart attack at basketball practice and i remember like it was yesterday i really struggled to understand how something i could love so much in terms of the game could take somebody that meant everything to me mm -hmm. and from that point on, I never wanted to play the game again. I didn't want anything wow. to do with it. I was done. And I was really new in my faith. And I remember my parents set me down and said, this is not the way Steve would have wanted it. Mm -hmm. And through a lot of prayer, I said, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this in my brother's honor. So everything that I have done, everything that I do for this game is in his honor. And I absolutely love being a positive part of young people's life. I understand we can't affect everybody, but if we can affect somebody, we're doing our job. And that's why I love what I get an opportunity to do. Amen. Yeah, that's, that's so true. That's awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. That is, that is very, um, very, that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a tough journey, but you know, he's, He's been a part of, of every single day, every, yeah. every part of this journey. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's crazy how God can, you know, bring you back to something, you know, even, even if it hurts you. Like, I, I think that's really, really awesome story. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so um, tell me, like, about your journey. What was it like? You know, you obviously coached from the high school level to where you are now. You coached in the BCS. You kind of coached everywhere. Um, well, otherwise. it's been an amazing journey. I, I, God has allowed this game to be very good to me, both professionally and personally. Um, I started at Duchenne High School, Duchenne yep. Academy. Mm -hmm. um, great opportunity there. And then had an opportunity to go to Iowa State as the um, grad assistant at that point. Um, and then right away had an opportunity to come to the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, Tony DiCecco took a chance on me. I didn't have a lot of experience, um, but asked if I would be willing to come with him to help build this program um, and had six amazing years here as an assistant and wasn't looking to leave. I love Cedar Falls. My parents are in Des Moines who have been an extremely important part of 
this journey with me. I'm still blessed to still have them both. Um, and then I had an opportunity to go to University of Northern Iowa. I knew I wanted to be a head coach, and it was at one of two places, Creighton, which is where I played, and Northern Iowa, which had given me my really my first opportunity. Right. And I remember talking to our AD. He said, if you want to be a head coach and you want to possibly come back here someday, you have to go get in a different system. Mm. You have to go learn from somebody else. And as hard as it was, um, because we know when we have to tell people who mean so much to us how hard that is, you just went through that probably. Yeah, terrible. Um, so I, I did had an opportunity to go to the University of Missouri. It was an amazing opportunity. I went from literally recruiting one state to recruiting nationally because I was the recruiting coordinator there. And I'm gonna tell you, I was extremely frustrated. I was scared. Um, I didn't think that I could do it. Um, and I remember thinking, what in the world have I gotten myself into? Because it was new. I was yeah. outside my comfort zone. Right. All of a sudden, I was in recruiting nationally. Yeah. Um, and I was in charge of what we were doing recruiting wise. And I remember um, the first year I got a call from Coach Flannery. They had an opening, and honestly, everything in me was like, go. There's an opportunity <laughs> to go back to where you play. You are familiar with that league. You have family in Omaha. The man that recruited you as the AD, all of those things. I had everything going, why not go back? And I remember my mother, only my mother, <laughs> I wanted her to tell me to go. Yeah. And she said, you need to pray on it. And I did, and I stayed for two more years and it was the best thing I ever did. Mm -hmm. Because by the time I left, we signed a top 25 recruiting class. I had a, we got back to the NCAA. It was just a tremendous learning experience for mm -hmm. me not only from a recruiting standpoint, but from an X's and O's standpoint. Right. Um, and then Coach Flannery called again. God works in mysterious ways. And then I had an opportunity to come back obviously to where I played. And there is nothing like that. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing like going home. Creighton allowed me an opportunity to make a better life for myself. They gave me that avenue with a phenomenal education, amazing people. Um, and the opportunity to go back there is something that I will always cherish. I will always remember and it will always be an important time in my life. There's not a lot of things that I would say I would do over. There are a couple of things there I would have done over, but I love that program. I love that staff. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously with Bruce being the AD there, um, it, Creighton will always be very special for mm -hmm. me. Then I had an opportunity to come to uh, the University of Northern Iowa as the head coach. Um, and there's something special about your first head coaching job being in your home state. Um, and my parents are in Des Moines, still in the same house that I grew up in. Um, as I said, I'm starting my 14th year here just to have them be a part of that journey. Yeah. is priceless. I can't put a price on that. And there are no words to express to you how much that means to me. Yeah, no, that's, that's really cool how it comes full circle. It came full circle a couple times for you. I will tell you, Shelly, I did not like playing against Creighton. I did not like playing against you. I did not like playing against Creighton at all. <laughs> it's a little bit better now that we're not in the league and we only see you once a year, yeah. but <laughs> I didn't like it. There was nothing yeah, we about didn't, that. We that didn't I like liked. it either. So that was, it was miserable, but it was, it was really cool. Yeah. It was great having you as a coach. Like I, I just, I remember, and I, it's funny that you sent me that picture of the um, little note I sent you because I do, I remember that, you know, like it's, it's something that I think about all the time. You know, you, you, you are what you, what you do. Um, and I, I just think that that applies to so many aspects of, basketball of life all that um to where it, it's it's really had a big impact on me you know and, and a big thing was discipline but you know we're going to talk a little bit about your philosophy when it comes to you know player development and and how you recruit so kids are having to figure out a way to get recruited without there being an evaluation period 
-hmm. And so that means that they're depending a lot on film. Um, so if you could talk about, you know, a couple of things that maybe that you can notice in film, because obviously there are going to be red flags that you can pick up from maybe a coach's conversation or mm -hmm. if you see him live. But what are some things if you're watching a kid on film um, that you would look at and that's going to be like a non-negotiable for you? For me, the one thing that I always look at, even over skill, is how hard that kid works on both sides of the basketball. Never taking possessions off. Are they a good teammate? Are they encouraging? Um, but not taking possessions off, in my book, is a non-negotiable. I'll take a kid that's going to work their fanny off over a kid that has talent and is going to take possessions off any day. Because I believe that I can teach skill development. I don't know at our level you can teach work ethic. I don't know that. I'm not convinced of that. But I do know that we can develop skill. And I think once you get to this level, you are what you do daily. You first build your habits and your habits build you. Um, and when you have a kid coming in that's not going to take possessions off, that's, that, is, that is amazing. Hmm. Because the game at our, at, at our level is – a different pace than high school. And you just can't put a price tag on the work ethic piece. Um, and the film, I think it's really important for kids right now because there may not be an evaluation, but they need to be in their coach's ear, their AAU coach's ear about getting film, huddle, getting film up, all of those things from their high school season, from last year's AAU, anything that they can do to get their name out because we're going to watch film because we don't know if we're going to have an evaluation. And as we set down some of the things we're going to look at, yeah, do they fit our system? Athleticism, do they, do they shoot it well? Are they consistent from the three? Are they a good ball handler, good passer? What do they do defensively? But more than anything else, do they take possessions off? Mm -hmm. That's really good. All right, I like it. Um, so now with, with the other side of it, you know, you talked about kids reaching out to their coaches and making sure that they're able to attain that film. But um, what are some things that you think maybe high school coaches could do to help navigate their kids recruiting, whether you're AAU or high school? Um, what can they, what, what are some things that they can maybe do? I think it's important that they're realistic. Okay, so what level, what level do I think this kid can play? as I look at her potential. And as I look at her potential, then I look at whether it's, it's the Valley or the Mac or the Big 10, the Big 12, whatever. And then I reach out to every single one of those coaches. I am constantly sending film. I am sending email. I am talking this kid up, but I am constantly doing the film. With that being said, you have to be realistic because if, if, she's, if she's a mid-major kid, I'm not going to send film to South Carolina. Right. <laughs> right? So you got to be realistic and give this, this kid an opportunity for the coaches to look at them when you're sending that film. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to send the film and you got to constantly pick up the phone and call and send emails. Because right now, no, we don't have anything else to do. So right. we're trying to find... We're trying to find kids that we can watch, kids that we can find more information on through the AAU coach, through the high school coach, um, questionnaires, all of those things. But we all have access to our phones. We all have access to email and we all have access to film. Mm -hmm. And right now, film and communication with email and phone calls is the best way to get a kid recruited right now because we just don't know. Right, right. Yeah, that's really good. Um... Okay, so from, from, a, from a development standpoint, you know, like if, if you're a high school coach and you typically have most of your kids, they're going to be normally out in July. Um, maybe that's not going to be the case as, as much this summer. Mm -hmm. What are some things that you would suggest? Like if you have a freshman coming in and, you know, what's a common thing that you notice from a development standpoint um, that you wish that they had, you know, been more prepared for when they walked on campus? Conditioning. Mm. strength and conditioning 
um, because it's such a faster game. It's such a more physical game at our level. And the conditioning piece, there's not a lot of stoppage in our game in, in most cases. Right. It's such a fast paced game. So the conditioning piece is very, very important. But I also understand as an incoming freshman, you're not going to grasp how important that is until you go through it. Right. Until you go through it. So the strength weight room, I can't, you can't put enough emphasis on that piece, in my opinion, um, because it's such a physical game at this level. And like I said, ball handling, I, all I need is some grass yeah. to, to work on my ball handling. Right. Right. All I need is a, is a garage or, or a wall to work on my passing. Mm-hmm. And like, I just need a bed or my, or my, or my uh, floor to work on my form. There's things that you can constantly be doing to make sure you're better prepared. But the strength and conditioning piece, I, I think that is undervalued with incoming freshmen coming in. Yeah. yeah. Even, even, even with the fact that we get them in the summer, mm-hmm. they still, and we, we don't know if we're going to have that access or not. Right. So I'm constantly talking to our incoming kids right now. I can't tell you how important the conditioning piece. And if you think that you're tired, you want to make sure you are really tired (laughs) so that you're starting to understand what it's going to take. Because if we don't get them, they're going to be in for a rude awakening when it comes to the, the conditioning piece, because it's, it's not a lot of stoppage. Yeah. It's such a fast pace, fast paced game. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what I was expecting to hear, but I, I mean, I totally agree with that. I, I don't know sure. if that makes any sense or not, no. but I do think that we lose sight of this, the, the weight room piece and the conditioning piece. Yeah. Um, because it doesn't do me any good to be the most skilled player in the country if I can't get them down the floor. Right. 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 Or yeah. if I can't finish a layup through contact. Uh, so I think those, those two and they go hand in hand are extremely vital for incoming freshmen. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's such a good, good point. Cause I'm, I mean, even reflecting on, on playing when I did, like, I just know when I was tired, I was, I was so incapable of doing so many things that were super simple, you know, my mm-hmm. plays because I couldn't think, you know, I'm too tired or, you know, the simple things kind of escape you when you're, when you're, when you're exhausted. So just putting a, a pass on target. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's, that's making really cool. a good cut. Right. Um, okay. So in general, like what's, what's your philosophy? Do you have a basic philosophy on player development? Oh, Chev, it's changed quite a bit. Well, you know, I believe that you have to start with the basics. I believe in teaching half whole half whole. Um, that has worked for, for us um, as opposed to teaching whole and then going back to breaking down. So yeah. I like to start with the basic fundamentals. Um, we do a, a lot of a simple drills, a lot of basic drills every single day. Um, from, from passing to, to cutting to learning how to box out, all the, the simple things that kids get bored with yeah, we do because I think um, it's easy to lose sight of that. And how many times has a game come down to boxing out, mm-hmm. or how many times has it come down to being able to um, go up and grab a rebound with two hands? So mm-hmm. just the simple, or being able to handle the basketball against pressure, right. and deliver a pass. Um, so just the basic fundamentals of ball handling. Form shooting, um, concentrating on layups, free throws, those basic things that we lose sight of because everybody wants to shoot a three. Yeah. Is what I talk about working on every single day. It's, Mm -hmm. it's not, um, it's becoming efficient in what you're doing and it's not necessarily being there for three hours. I can get done what I need to get done if I'm doing it correctly in a half hour. Mm -hmm. If I'm efficient and I'm going hard, I can get everything I need to get done. So it's quantity 
are quality over quantity. Right. And that's one of the things that we talk a lot about. And I don't want the I have to, I want the I get to mindset. Because if I have the I get to mindset, I'm going to get a lot done. If I have that I have to mindset, I ain't getting nothing done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it's funny you talk about that because um, your teams, they're always very, very fundamentally strong. You know, they, <laughs> I, I feel like you guys run stuff like your robots, you know, not you guys have feel and you guys, yep. you know, uh, different reads and stuff. But from the standpoint of being very, um, I guess it, it's like, it's, it's like perfect. You know, your, your sets, you can tell what your purpose is. They do a good job of pretending like they're going to do something. And they're actually, you know, they're, they're just super detailed. We, we do talk a lot about details, mm -hmm. um, and, and doing things the right way. Um, because if I don't do it right, and take the time to do it right, when will I take the time to do it over? So right. we do talk a lot about doing things the right way and having the right mentality. And we're very, very big on scouting report details, very big on, on those things. Yeah. Um, and our, our kids do, they do a terrific job of, of staying in, in detail to what we want to do and how we want to do it and being able to make in-game adjustments. Um, in, Again, those are things that we talk about. That's a part of our system. And our kids have done a terrific job of buying into that. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I, I feel like you gave me some really good stuff. And I'm honestly trying to think of more questions. Because <laughs> you like killed all the ones that I have. Like that, that, that's- did I, did I give you what you wanted? I, you had, I mean, seriously, it was, that, that was really, really good. Especially the stuff sure? when you talked about, um, yeah, especially the stuff when you talked about, um, you know, ways that you can get better during COVID and the film piece. There's, there's so many things. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I can go out in the street and do sprints. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, but, but it's you got to go back to old school. Chef, we didn't have all this stuff. We didn't I know. have all this, all this stuff. See, you can, that's, that's why you're the expert in this because we, I you mean, we, we we're it. old school, Chef. I mean, we, we figured out, do some push-ups, you know. <laughs> And you can go, there's so many things that you can do yeah. and you have to be creative. If you, if you want to be, and it's not even just sports related. If you want to be good in anything, you have to figure out how to be creative and how to adapt, mm -hmm. how to adapt to your environment. Uh, because we become a product of our environment. There's no if and buts about that. So I have to be able to adapt and I have to be able to, find ways to allow myself to flourish in what could be circumstances that are out of my control. And I think that's what you're seeing. No one expected this, no one wants this, but it, it's the season that God has us in. And we have to be able to flourish in that season and that's stepping outside our comfort zone right. and finding ways to continue to be better, not only from an athletic standpoint, but from a, from a personal standpoint. Right, for sure. Um, I do have a question, like, so when it comes to maybe an AAU coach calling you or a high school coach calling you about a kid, mm -hmm. what are some, maybe some do's and don'ts in that phone call? Um, because I feel like there, there has to be some people who are a little nervous about picking up the phone. Um, yeah, but I, I, I think the most important thing is just always be honest, mm -hmm. always be honest and, and and so your, your kid, talk about your kid. Um, because for me, I look for, and I want honesty. I want somebody to tell, if I ask about work ethic, I want somebody to tell me the truth. Well, you know, very good offensively, but sometimes takes possessions off defensively. Not real coachable. I don't ba base my decision on that. I take that into consideration because I do believe in my ability to help make people better and maybe be able to get something out of them that somebody else may not. Yeah. So I don't necessarily, if somebody tells me they have a bad attitude, I don't judge that. There's a reason why I believe. So I just want them to be honest so that I know what I'm dealing with and how to deal with it. Right. Um, and if I have all of that information and things change, I get that and I'm okay with that. But if I have all of that information, 
I'm good to go. I can figure out and find everything else and build that relationship where I start to see some things for myself. I'm never going to allow an AAU coach or a high school coach to completely, um, completely, what's the word I'm looking for? Dictate. Dictate who I recruit and how I recruit them. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way. I just want them to be honest and then I can go from there. Mm -hmm. And again, through that, I'm still going to be able to figure out, okay, do they take possessions off? Right. Or does this kid have it? I mean, what's going on at home? There's so many things that go into it. There's so many layers. So if you can be honest and just sell your kid, everything else will take care of itself. Right. But you don't want to overplay them and you don't want, you don't want to oversell them and you don't want to undersell them. Just be honest and upfront and everything else will take care of itself because we as coaches, we know we don't want a kid that's already tapped out. We want a kid that has a high ceiling. And once we get them, we have an opportunity to help them reach their potential. Mm -hmm. So that's what I mean by when I say don't undersell or don't oversell. Right. Well, just be honest and, and then allow us to continue to make those evaluations. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. No, it, it totally does. Do you have any tips for those coaches to have a better feel for what level that their kid might, you know, might be? I, I would say to try to familiarize themselves with different, different conferences, okay. different leagues. Yeah. Um, and, and that is going to be hard, but I would pick out, a, maybe pick out a, a BCS, pick out a mid-major, pick out a D2, pick out a Div Division One, or a couple of them. And, and either watch film on those and then try to evaluate from that standpoint. And then obviously, once we get into season, basketball's on all the time. Right. Um, well, when we, hopefully when we get it back. And then you can, you can evaluate and, and assess, assess from that standpoint too. Right. But you have to familiarize yourself with, with the different levels of collegiate basketball. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. Yeah, I think they're, I'm just reflecting on the times that I got filmed from coaches who were trying to like sell their kid. Mm -hmm. a, a lot of it came from AAU programs that just wanted the names, you know, they wanted to have the reputation of sending their kids to bigger schools to where, even at the expense of that kid's experience, you know, because if, if they can at that level, so. Well, and that's, a, you bring up a good point because I do, I do think that AAU allows a kid to get a different type of exposure depending on the program. Mm -hmm. However, I also think that there's a lot of work that can be done at the high school level as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's cutthroat with the high school and the AAU. And I don't, I can't even begin to tell you how to fix that. But I do know that high school coaches have every bit of responsibility and right to help get those kids' names out there and them an opportunity to be recruited the best they can. Yeah. And right now, the film access and the phone calls and all of those things is the best avenue. Everybody's in the same boat. Yeah. So why not use that right now? Because it's even playing field right now. There, there's, no, there's no AAU per se, and there may not be. So how can I get my kid noticed right now? What's the best avenue? film, phone calls, emails. Thank you for listening. Tune in next time and don't forget to support by subscribing and sharing.